It's your girl Shalane. I'm back today with another video. In today's video, we're going to discuss the Social Security cost of living adjustment. Guys, it has increased, but not by much. We're also going to talk about Social Security recipients could be missing out on tax refunds. That's right, if you're unsure on if you should file taxes. And then we're going to talk about the CPI report that was released today and a whole lot more. So if you want to know what's going on in the lovely world of Social Security, you already know what to do. Stay tuned. Your girl's got you covered. Now, if this is your first time tuning into my channel, hi, hello, hey, friend. My name is Shalay, and here on this channel, we discuss shopping, saving, and everything in between. I would love to have you a part of my internet family. Super easy. Click the big old red subscribe button down below when you're in, just like that. So while you're at it, go ahead and give me a like, especially if you love me bringing this content to you. You guys know we are in full election season, so we're going to see a lot of different things that come out, as well as if you're not an Amazon Prime member, you can try out Amazon Prime for free. You don't have to enter your credit card information or anything by clicking the link in the cards or in the description box below. All right, so let's go ahead and kick things off because the U.S. inflation was slightly stronger than expected last month, but it did have a little to change expectations that the Federal Reserve will begin cutting rates later this year. So as of right now, consumer prices rose about 3.2% in February from a year earlier. Now the Department of Labor released this report and they said it's slightly up with from their expectations, which was about 3.1%. Now this is the second straight month um, where it was higher than expected inflation and is likely to reinforce the central banks. They want to wait and see towards like the rate reductions when officials meet next week. So the officials are kind of still focused on should they cut rates rather than raise them again as well. So we will see. But because the rates were a little bit stronger, that's where we got the 2025 cost of living adjustment for Social Security it has increased, but a lot of the seniors still feel shortchanged. So the latest estimate as of right now for the Social Security cost of living adjustment for 2025 has jumped to 2.4%, which is larger than what we had last month. So according to the Senior Citizens League, which is a nonprofit advocacy group, in January, remember I came to you guys and said that they were looking at about 1.75%. Well, now it's like, hey, we have increased a little bit. But, I mean, come on now. Of course, if the inflation rate did not decrease, then you're going to have to increase the cost of living adjustment. Now, all the items that older adults spend most of their money continue to rise as well. So, this includes like shelter, medical, transportation. These prices still remain higher overall with the inflation rate. Shelter jumped about 5.7% over year, while medical services, they creeped up by 1.1%. This is all information that's coming from the Bureau of Labor Statistics as well. Hospital care, guys, it increased by 6.1%, and then transportation was the highest of them all at 9.9%. So we all know that the cost of living adjustment is every year, and it is usually based on the average of annual increases from the Consumer Price Index Report, as well as the urban wage earners from clerical workers from July through September. So this rate can continue to go up or down now last year remember the increase was about 3.2 percent and it started at the beginning of the year to recipients and it was supposed to help you know with the pace of inflation so last year the average increase for each retiree was about 59 dollars per month but seniors are saying like that is still not enough they're still trying to catch up from the higher prices that we've seen in the last few years so 93 percent of respondents said that their household expenses increased by more than that $59 per month that they received for the cost of living adjustment. 43% said their monthly household expenses rose more than $185. Let me know down in the comments, the 3.2% that you received last year, which was about $59 or more, did that help you or hurt you? As well as, are your bills totaling more than $185? Because if that's the case, I mean, if this year if you get 2.4%, 
what is that's going to be maybe like 40 more dollars is that going to help or is that going to hurt you more again i know a lot of my social security recipients were like once that cost of living adjustment came even though they received the increase here it was almost like they were robbing peter to pay paul because their snap benefits decreased or their rent increased or medicare coverage increased medicare premiums as well so let me know how much do you think it needs to be when it comes to the cost of living adjustment but we know 1.75 percent is not going to do it and that's what we were looking at in january and now in march we're looking at 2.4 percent um i don't know what we're gonna have by you know around september or what's going to actually come out in october when they release the report but let me know down below is 2.4 percent enough or no nah. Now, in yesterday's video, we also talked about Social Security taxes because Social Security taxation is also on the rise right now. So more Social Security recipients, they are paying taxes on their benefits as well. And it depends on where you live at and how much of your Social Security is taxed depends on really your income. So unlike like federal income tax brackets, the income thresholds that subject Social Security benefits to taxation, these have never been adjusted for inflation since the tax became effective in 1984. So this means like more older taxpayers, they become liable for the tax on their social security benefits over time. And the portion of those taxable benefits, they can increase as your retirement income grows as well. So let's say like if your income thresholds for social security had been adjusted for the inflation like the federal brackets then the individual filing status would level up to like from twenty five thousand to over seventy five thousand two hundred and fifty dollars for joint filers um it could be more than like ninety three thousand based on inflation through december 2023 these are just all estimates as well but a lot of people were asking in my videos like hey, should I even file taxes? Um, will I receive the child tax credit if I don't file taxes? So a lot of Social Security recipients believe that there's no reason why they should file a tax return. But a lot of the experts are saying that if you don't do this, you could be missing out on free money like the earned income tax credit, the child tax credit. Depending on your income, some seniors are required to file taxes even if you're retired and you just started receiving your benefits. I tell a lot of people to definitely speak with a tax professional, but many Americans who make less than the federal minimum senior income tax requirements of, I think it's like 15,700, you might think that, hey, there's no benefit to you filing taxes. That could be wrong, guys, okay? It could be 100% wrong. And that can cause you to kind of miss out on any refunds, stimulus payments, or anything for the 2023 tax year. Now, I'm not saying we're getting a stimulus, okay? Let me put that out there. But if there's any additional money and you haven't had it, then you could miss out. So, like, if your federal income tax was withheld from your Social Security benefits or any sources of income, then filing a tax return is the only way that you can receive a refund if you overpaid your taxes. And typically, a lot of seniors who work like part-time jobs or they have a low level of social security income each month, some of these seniors would qualify for the earned income tax credit or that additional child tax credit, which you can only take advantage of if you file a tax return as well. So I know a lot of people are asking, should I file a tax return? I would definitely just speak with someone and see because each case is different. And then for my seniors that are on like Medicare, the income reported on your tax return, it does affect the premiums that you pay for your Medicare Part B and Part D coverage. So if you don't file, then that can complicate like some of the calculations as well. So, I mean, I would just check. Certain states still tax Social Security benefits differently from how the federal government does. Yesterday's video, we talked about West Virginia eliminating their state uh, taxes for Social Security in 2026 as well. But when it comes to like those tax codes, it changes. It can be different. I don't want to give you any misinformation as well. I would just say reach out to someone if you think that you should or you could take advantage of any opportunities as well. So not everyone has access to like 
free tax advice. There are a lot of free resources, especially for my seniors as well. Um, you can look at the IRS. I want to say they have like an elderly taxation uh, program as well, as well as like the, um, it wasn't the Chamber of Commerce, but there was a lot of states that have programs that just look out for Social Security, elderly income, low income Americans as well. If you need help when it comes to filing your taxes and they do have the IRS Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. All these programs as are free as well. And then they also have counseling for the elderly as well. So, hey, it's all free. They're public accountants. They can help you. So my seniors, if you think, can you receive a little bit of extra money? Go ahead and just reach out to the, one of them and it could be in your best interest. Now, speaking of tax refunds, some refunds are starting to now come by mail instead of direct deposits. So there's been a lot of fraud and identity identity theft that is going on. So a lot of officials are taking additional steps to safeguard taxpayers. So I know a lot of people are still looking for their tax refund or they're like, girl, where is it at? I still haven't received it. And a lot of people filed electronically so you can receive your refund as soon as possible. I mean, that's the option that they told everyone. But with a lot of hackers that are finding ways to steal refunds, a lot of state officials said they're receiving or they're sending out paper checks because it may be safer in some situations. So like I know in Colorado, they were saying like the Department of Revenue has said to avoid any potential refund fraud, they are now starting to send out paper checks because it outweighs the risk of someone sending a refund electronically to a scammer, as well as, um, I mean, now you gotta just check your mailbox, right? And then for those refunds that did request direct deposit, or maybe you paid a little bit extra for a direct deposit, they were just going to give you your money back as well. But I would definitely say that like, you know, just kind of keep an eye on your mailbox. I know they're doing this in Colorado. Let me know down below. Are you even still waiting on a tax refund? Did you choose to file electronically or did you go ahead and opt for a paper refund by snail mail? But those that are scheduled to receive paper checks, um, they will receive a letter explaining why they made the decision to give you a paper check as well as they'll have like a phone number with any questions that you have as well. But the U.S. Postal Service recommends that residents collect their mail immediately or you can arrange for a local post office pickup. Most people have like informed delivery now as well. And then last but definitely not least, fewer people this year are just getting tax refunds and this is according to the IRS. So as of March 1st, the latest data that was available, the IRS reported that refunds were up by 5.1%. So the average was about $3,028 during the similar time frame of March 3rd of 2023. The flip side of all that is the tax refunds are down. So the actual refund is up, but a lot of people aren't getting refunds as well from a year ago. So the IRS said that they issued about 36.28 million tax refunds, which is down about 13.7% from last year. So you get a refund, it's more if you can qualify for one. And then you have other people who just don't qualify. And I've been reading a lot of comments where people said, hey, they've been receiving notices that they owe this year or um, their refund checks were being garnished as well. So this is what we have that's going on in Social Security for the cost of living adjustment, filing taxes if you are a Social Security recipient. For those that are still waiting on where's my refund, you might be receiving it by paper mail as well as, you know, hey, if you are able to get a refund, it may be larger, but you may not get a refund at all. And this is all I have, guys. Thank you so much for leaving your comments, talking down below. We we have a lot, you know, we have a, a long road to November and we'll see what goes on with Social Security. But let me know your thoughts down below. Grab you some Amazon Prime. And as always, please like comment, subscribe, share my videos, and I will talk to you later, Gator. Bye, guys.